Good morning. It is Sunday and it is time for the hook of the week once again here on Black Bear Forge. We don't have to look very hard in what's left of our hook bucket this week because there are only two pieces left in what's left of the bucket. And they are not very fancy pieces of material at all. These are about quarter inch thick at the fat end, three eighths wide. This one's four inches long. This one's five inches long. So that's about six millimeters by 10 millimeters by a little over 100 millimeters and 125 millimeters or so. Nothing particularly exciting. And I had originally thought that we would probably just make simple J hooks out of this. Just wrap the whole thing up, make a simple hook, call it done, and move on to other things here on Black Bear Forge. But everybody really likes the hook of the week, and I'm getting to the point I kind of like the challenge of doing something a little bit different, and just doing a couple of J-hooks at this point isn't much of a challenge. So let's see if we can do something a little bit different with these two pieces of material and make some sort of an interlocking hook so that one piece wraps around the other piece and then that becomes the hook and one side's the hanger and, and see what we end up with. So what I have in mind for these two pieces, I think I'm going to flatten both ends out. One end will be where we put the holes to mount it to the wall. Then the other end I'm going to round up so that we have a round bar where the two pieces connect and we will intertwine those to make our hook. I actually think I'll start with doing the round bar part. I'm just going to take this to square for about, oh, maybe two inches. Then we're going to take it to octagon. This is still going to be a fairly simple little hook. It's getting a little bit of delamination in it, so this has been well abused at some point. That's going to affect us a little bit. Now this isn't wrought iron, so that little bit of shearing we're seeing is just stress from over forging. As I recall, this started off as a pretty big piece. So we're going to reheat this regularly now and make sure it stays hot and that'll make it work a little bit better. This first piece isn't too bad, but if necessary, bring it up to welding heat and then weld it back together. But for the purpose of this hook, those little lengthwise seams aren't really going to make any difference. It will give it the appearance that it's wrought iron, even though it is not. I think that taper is where I want it. Next heat, we'll start rounding it up. And this first one is pretty much done. We can set it aside and use it as a length guide for the other one. So this could be a little longer. I'll take a little longer bite at the edge of the anvil and make it match. So we'll just stretch this out a little bit and make both of these match before I finish rounding this up. Or bring them really close. It'll still stretch a little bit as we round it up. So. Well, it looks 
looks pretty good. Then the longer one of these I will use as a as the hook in, and the shorter one I'll use as the hanger in. I'm just going to go ahead and spread that out and draw it out just a little bit. Now somebody asked the other day how much planning I put into these. The hook of the week videos, there is very little. Sometimes I'll see something in my head, but I don't really plan it out. I don't do test pieces. I don't practice. The vast majority is just done right here at the anvil. And a lot of times the hook I think I'm going to make when I start the video is not the hook I end up with because I see things differently as we go. But I think I explained those changes in most of these. But the main idea here is that this is a creativity challenge. It's not a challenge in planning and design so much but creativity at the anvil, kind of going with the flow of where the material wants to go and what speaks to you at the time. If you're doing something like this, give yourself the freedom to change course, change lanes, do something a little bit different. Say, hey, I didn't see that when I started. I want to explore that idea and I want to go this other direction. Today's hook is still headed the same direction as when we started, but it could change before we're done. Mostly I just wanted to clarify that these aren't some big design. I don't have a list of hooks I'm gonna make. This is all sort of made up as we go. In other words, I'm winging it. I'm gonna knock the corners of this down a little bit so as I spread it, it might end up a little rounder. If you were just making a J hook, this would be all you'd need. You could easily bend this up into a J hook and you could put a couple of holes in this to hang it with a couple of screws. And we're still going to put the holes in it, but we're not making a single hook. The next thing I want to do with this is go ahead and punch those holes. Now I don't think I've shown this little clamp in very many videos, if any. It's just a drill press vise somebody sent me with a tab welded on it. So it goes in the hardy hole. I think the, the second hole may be faster now that i got that set. But that does help hold that so I don't have to chase it. Pretty nice idea. And I'll link to the video where I first received this vise so that you can see what it is and give proper credit to who made it. Right now I can't remember his name. I'll link to that up here. It is nice to have things held so they don't bounce around. So there we have our, our holes punched. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spiral this up. And I'm going to go around a couple of turns here, I think. I'm going to have to drive a drift through there before we're all done because it's going to close up the middle a little bit. You can certainly do this around a bar trapped in the vise. Probably a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and drive a quarter inch drift through that eye. That's pretty much all I'm going to do with that. Well, except for turning it up 90 degrees. I'm 
so that later we can put the hook half in here and it will then interlock with this back piece and wrap around it. Draw this out towards the end and let it spread so it's very similar to that other side. But I want this a little thinner and more delicate because this will be the hook end. And it just doesn't need to be fat and chunky. I just want to even it up and make it neat. Knock any sharp edges off. And this is what we'll make our hook end out of. I'm going to start with just a little roll over there. I think today we'll go to a bending fork to do this. Not a lot of material here, so it's not going to be a great big hook. So now I want to pass this through there and give myself a, enough tail to wrap it. This would be good to calculate out ahead of time, but I didn't, so we're just going to use about that much. And doing a little wrap like this really does go much better with a torch. The controlled heat is fairly important. Also, looking at this, I think I should have wrapped this first one going the other direction. Live and learn. By other direction, I mean so the tail end came out towards the hook. Because the tail end of this one is going to come out on the top of it. You do want these to be in the same plane when you're done, but we'll get some opportunity to twist that as we go. Don't heat too far out or you just end up with a great big bow. That's why the torch is so nice. You can get that controlled heat you really want. You can get that to bend right where you really want it to. Bump the camera, sorry. Squeeze that up a little bit. This isn't exactly what I saw in my head. It gives me some ideas for future versions of it.
I'm going to put that in there and then see if I can wiggle this down a little bit. I'm going to hate pounding on the hook, but let's see what happens. No, it's not really going to go anywhere. I just thought I might be able to extend that just a little bit, but not going to happen on this one, so it's just going to be whatever it's going to be. Now in the long run, I do want that piece to sit flat on the wall. And I want the hook to go back to the wall. You might not want that if you're trying to do one of these, but that kind of locks everything in by getting that all offset, kind of knots it up a little bit more. Now as a result, I like this hook a little bit better than I did just a minute ago. But that's generally what I was thinking about when we started today. It's weird. And I'm okay with weird. In fact, sometimes I just kind of embrace weird. Sometimes you have to take your work pretty seriously, and sometimes you just don't. You get to have fun with it. Well, this is certainly kind of an oddball little hook, but I think it's interesting and I'm really intrigued by this idea. So we may see this idea again, but maybe interpreted just a little bit differently. I think the upper tail could have been longer. The lower tail should have wrapped going towards the downhill side of the hook. It'd be ideal if both wraps had the same number of turns. I think it would look a little bit better. Perhaps the best idea would be to put a 90 degree bend in each piece at the same distance so you can then overlap those this way and then wrap each one up and then you should end up with the same length wraps. I don't do a lot of wrapped work like this but it is kind of cool looking and this is a nice funky looking little hook. So I kind of like it but that does bring to an end this bucket of hook of the week and this was my intended conclusion point all along. When I started I never intended to go any further than one bucket. But not only has it been really popular with everybody and people say, oh, I hope you don't quit doing hook of the week, but about three months ago, halfway through this bucket, I started a fresh bucket of scrap over by the cutoff saw and it is so full I can't lift it. So I'm generating hook of the week materials faster than I can make hooks. But as long as you folks out there watching the videos are interested in seeing the hook of the week, we'll keep doing a hook of the week or something very similar that uses these materials that are otherwise probably destined for a recycler somewhere. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. Stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, then make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.